And so number one is if he tries to declare victory before counting all the ballots and then and then tries to make the claim that those ballots are somehow invalid. That's one scenario. Another scenario is where all these Republican controlled state legislatures uh, send in. They say, yeah, yeah, our state may have voted for Biden, but we think most of those votes are are invalid. And so therefore. Uh, we're going to send in a different slate of electors. And that's actually not unprecedented. Um, in, in 1876, the same th- I mean, this is actually a huge part of our history. That's In 1876, there was extreme polarization in the nation. Multiple states proffered different competing slates of electors that, that governors and, and state legislatures said, we have different you know, different results. And as a result, there was a a huge contest of legitimacy again. And the only way it was resolved was right before the inauguration. It was basically a grand bargain. That was the end of reconstruction that ushered in Jim Crow. Yes. So we know that the impulse of democracy works. It totally works. Right. And so that's part of what we're trying to avoid is the impulse of political leaders is to cut deals. And what we've learned from from other coups and other places is that you know, the thing they want us to believe is that we don't have agency. Actually, at every step of the process, if we engage in noncompliance, which is different than protest, right, which is that we're, we're going to refuse to carry out the orders of the coup plotters, whether that's government bureaucrats or whether that's labor going on strike or whether that is uh, people engaging in protest to pressure politicians to sign the pledge, which is one of the many different kinds of action opportunities that we have uh, that, that, that we're talking about. Um, there's different ways to create a shift in the balance of forces at every step of the way. So even though the Constitution is unclear about a bunch of these potential contest election scenarios, at each moment, the more that we get engaged, the more it can tip the, the balance in our favor. And so that's partly why we're organizing people now that we're not waiting. And we're also, there's actually a lot of other groups doing the same thing, including in swing states. So, you know, for example, the Rochester AFL-CIO just declared that they will, you know, instigate a, a strike for themselves and call for a general strike if uh, if Trump tried to declare victory with all the ballots. Not hey, Rochester, hell yeah. Hey, Rochester. And so there's there's a number of different, pla- or in, in Florida, the Dream Defenders and Sunrise are organizing uh, a youth strike and organizing uh, different different ways to actually go to the ballots and do things like de-escalation if they encounter people like the Proud Boys, et cetera. And we in Choose Democracy, which you can sign our pledge at choosedemocracy.us, it's not just about some abstract pledge. It's that once people sign the pledge, they learn about we have eight more trainings coming uh, so far planned. We're doing multiple trainings per week. and. Thousands of people are coming to every single training. So we're training thousands and thousands of people in everything from de-escalation to uh, ways to, diff- to to protect the results and also strategies to understand that what we're talking about is identifying what are the different pillars, what are the different social blocks. Oops, I just hit my microphone. I'm getting so excited. Social <laughs> blocks in society that need to consent to a power grab. And how can we pressure them to withdraw their consent to a power grab? And the thing that we've learned to arc back to what you said earlier, Francesca, about like violence or nonviolence, there's an active debate on the left about in normal protest considerations about the role of whatever, violence, property destruction, confronting fascists. To us, that's not, I mean, that's an interesting debate. It's not relevant to a anti-coup situation. Sure. In an anti-coup yeah. situation where you're in a contest for legitimacy, number one, you need to pull out, you, what, what we're not doing is some kind of self-righteous moral pulling out of like a insular left subculture to protest. What we're talking about is mass participation, right? And the best way to invite your mom, Francesca, is to have it be nonviolent, right? So yeah. and if there's watermelon, she's totally there too. 